Alright, ladies and gentlemen, uh, time for another tutorial. However, I should note that uh, the Portal 2 update that was released about, or that I just got about half an hour ago, has broken Portal 2. So, the authoring tools will start, but Portal 2 will crash if I try to start from Hammer. If I try to start it from Steam, the Steam servers are too busy to handle my request. Also, Portal 2, as of an update, from last month is now 127 megabytes. Well, the authoring tools, they're about five gigabytes. So they, they've swapped things around. You used to be, the authoring tools were 127, and Portal 2 itself was five to six gigs. Now it's flipped. I have no idea what's going on, but all I do know right now is it's not working. So, back to the tutorial. Uh, so this is my second take at it. I did start try it uh, earlier, but things just kind of weren't working out because I didn't know that it was going to break it so easily. Then again, it's not surprising. Usually, when a Portal 2 update comes out, I have to uh, verify the integrity of the tools and then Portal 2. Otherwise, the tools will grab files that are not valid for Portal 2. I don't know what files they are, I just know that if I do it, Portal 2, then the authoring tools, it breaks. So if you do authoring tools, then Portal 2 is fine. However, in this case, that's just not the case. So, anyways, uh, the tutorial is going to be more about a, a sliding constraint thing that I think that I remembered I did in the UDK following a tutorial that I don't know where to find anymore, but one that recreated in Source SDK, and I was playing around with physics at ZDs and came to mind. So, I'm going to jump it in and do this. Uh, I would say it's been a while since I touched the UDK, but since I tried to do this tutorial once before, about 15 minutes ago, I can't really say that. <laughs> well, I can, but... Yeah. And for some reason the UDK is taking a lot longer to start out than it did last time. Weird. Now, if Portal up, Portal Two update breaks the UDK, I'm gonna be a little peeved. Okay, so recent. Boy. All right, so here we are, and let me zoom in over here. This in particular is what I'm looking at. So I have prismatic actor. Uh, so pretty much what this does is it connects to this K actor and lets it bounce back and forth but constrains it to a line. I don't think there are any more actors in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop into the game real quick. It's a thing I wish Portal or Source SDK had, just kind of hop into the game's little small window and zoom around and whatnot. And I'll switch weapons here, and if I punch this, it slides and springs back. So this is what I want to recreate. Just, like, we won't have the, the punching <laughs> going on here, since that's just not part of Source. Or at least Portal 2. No gravity gun, so... We'll have to pick it up, drag it back, and have it bounce back and forth instead of hitting it. Okay, so, uh, I'm gonna save that. All three tools beta! Actually, I could probably do this on my laptop. It hasn't updated Portal 2 in months, so it could probably still work. Uh, that's assuming offline mode will function. So I can turn off automatically update this, otherwise I'm kind of stuck. Uh yeah, I did rename this. Okay. So, um what I have here is a 32 uh, unit cube tied to funk phase box called brush cube. Inside of it, I have a fizz slide constraint. If I zoom in over here. I've taken the, the helper or origin and dragged it out on the x-axis so that way the fizz box will slide back and forth. Alright, so 
Next up, since I can't really go and came and test this at the moment, though probably by the time you watch this tutorial, it'll be fixed. Until then, uh, I'm not going to have any examples to show. So, after you do this, you're going to need a spring, because this slide constraint doesn't stop you. So it'll you have friction, a load scale, but it doesn't have a distance limit on it at all. And that's where the, uh, a spring comes in. So if you go ahead, entities, and look for a spring, PSM, SPR. There we go. Fizz spring at the bottom of my list here. Go ahead and add this in. And I only want it to go this far, from where the box is to the spring here. Now I'm going to grab the little helper, drag it to the center. This is just some. some how I arrange it so it makes sense to me and how it kind of worked before Portal 2 was um, incapacitated about 45 minutes ago. So once you do that, go ahead and open it up and tie its entity, uh, first entity or second entity, just only one entity tie to the brush cube. And if you haven't done so already for the slide constraint, do that as well. Pretty quick, pretty simple. And that's really it. Things you will you will want to change are the spring constant. So so you get something a very stiff spring versus a very uh, spongy spring, and the dampening constant depending on what you set the spring constant. If you wanted to retain all energy, it just keeps going back and forth without losing any energy set it to zero. Otherwise, bump up the number and it'll lose more energy as it oscillates. And yeah, you could do a spring length, but not necessary. That's pretty much it, really. <laughs> so, some other things you can do, so I can pad this out, because I'm at what? Let's see here. Click. Seven minutes. Alright, really short tutorial video. Another thing you do is, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to add two weighted cubes here. I take these two cubes, name them accordingly. Cube! No, cube one. There we are. Then, go ahead and create a spring. Place it between them. Oops. Raise it up. And then set entity one to one cube and entity two to the other cube. The result of this, when you get in game, these cubes will be bouncing all over the room and having a grand old time. And another thing you can do. Go ahead and copy this cube and drag it over. Cube 3. Now, uh, I wanted to try and recreate a remote control room. Room, not broom. Room I made in Half Life 2 Deathmatch. I've been having a little trouble getting the uh, Source SDK to even work with Deathmatch, so. I haven't tried opening up in. Uh, Portal 2 yet to see if any of the entities are obsolete, air quotes. So, what entity I did use was Fizz Thruster, but it doesn't quite work as I want in here. But it's still a nice entity to have, so. I'm just gonna throw maybe a couple, uh, one more thing out so just to pad this video up since I can't really show you guys what's going on when you compile. I may add, uh, add that at when Portal 2 starts working and just add it, tack it onto the end of the video. No audio, or maybe some audio. Random music. I don't know. Okay, so attached object. Let's see here. Cube 3. So this fit thruster. Go ahead and set it for cube 3. And the amount of force. Uh, give it 10k. Wait. There. 
100k could be interesting, but not 10k is good. Next up. Oh, note how uh, the yellow line right here. It's pointing to 0, 0, 0. That's the direction it's going to push. Kind of. So. Prop button. What this is going to do is make the cube kind of rotate around on its own as long as the button is depressed. Um, pressed, not depressed. So, I'm pressed. I didn't name the thruster. I should name it Linear Thruster. My nose is not running. Awesome! No. Um, activate, and on button reset, deactivate. If you look at the thruster, go to class info, properties, you'll see time of force. I'm leaving it at zero, which means it'll, as it says in the description here, or the help, it'll stay on forever or until deactivated. That way I can just control that from here. So delay before reset, two seconds. That way when I press the button it activates and two seconds later the button resets and the thruster stops. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it over. Oops. It's not at all. There we are. Of note, uh, fist thrusters, according to the console, can have a parent name. So you have to edit your FGDs to uh, add that in. It does work, kind of. I can't really tell right now because I did not have a chance to parent something to the thruster while it was parented to the cube and see it move around before what I said earlier in the video about portrait not breaking. Uh, okay, so... Oh, but also, with the updates, always be sure to up the back up your FGDs. Use something to compare the, the new FGDs to old FGDs when updates occur. And that way you can see if there's any new entities, anything missing, cut out, or whatnot, and see pretty much make a diff file, a difference between what you had before the update and when, what is there after. Because it always, the updates always erase custom uh, files because, well, the newer files are stable. Yeah. Having it account for all the other things that could be done by the user. Uh, no, no, not good. All right, so next one here. Uh, that short spiel over. I'm going to do an angle thruster here. Thirst. So go to physics. So angular thruster has a different name. Torque. This torque. Think of it as an angular thruster. Yeah. <laughs> An angular thruster, fizz torque. All right, so go ahead and name it accordingly. And now I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to instead drag the helper for this entity straight up, which means that this cube is going to be doing something along the lines of this when you turn on the thruster. Don't know why you would do that when you could use it, but I found it fun. I was kind of giddy when I was playing around with these entities, so that's why I'm throwing them in, having a good time. Hoping you guys have it too. If you don't, uh, darn. So that's really it. To recap, we have these entities here which consists of a slack constraint, a spring, and a fizz box. Though, if once you get in game, you can grab the fizz box, pull it to one side or the other, and it'll bounce back and forth, and not fly off into space, into the void, like a normal slack constraint would have you. Um, up here, these three entities will result in two cubes flying around in tandem, and bouncing off one another, bouncing off the walls, and randomly spinning. Kind of fun to watch.
this one here. This cube is being uh, propelled by a thruster, which when you press this button, turn on and have the cube kind of plop its way through. If you pick up the cube and throw it around without parenting it, the thruster will stop working. It seemed to keep working when I parented it, so that's why I added a parent to the cube that it was pushing around. Now if we go over here, this final setup here, these three entities, is torque. It'll make it spin around. So, uh, last place you probably... I saw this fizz torque that I, was similar to a fizz motor in Half-Life 2 in the Ravenholm section, using engine traps on zombies. So this is kind of like that, only it doesn't have the um, what is it? The some I/O and detection that fizz motor does. Yeah, it does not spin a time inertia scale. Yeah, they're pretty similar, but yeah, press this button and let me make sure the outputs are right. So we have a cube that spins, a cube that kind of pops about, cubes that bounce around, and a cube that will slide and bounce around as if on a rail or attached by a cable of some sort. So with that, uh, I'm going to call it. Let's see here, 16 minutes. I guess I padded out enough to keep going. So, uh, if and when Portal 2 becomes viable or functional again, I may add a uh, video of this in action, probably as an addendum or just a another, air quotes, tutorial video showing what happens with nothing else, or I might just tack it on, in which case, uh, lose all the views, doesn't really matter, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. Alright.